Short stature is a very important topic for both PG exams and also for practice in pediatrics. So we'll see this topic here in a stepwise manner. So if the parents come to you complaining that their child is short, the first thing you must do is to find out if actually the child is short stature. For this, we measure height or length. Length is measured in children less than 2 years of age or in bedridden, that is moribund patients. We measure it with the help of an infantometer or by the two cardboard method which has been demonstrated in the picture below. Height is measured in the age group more than 2 years of age or those who can stand in a steady manner. This is a stadiometer in which it is a wall mount stadiometer where you pull down the tape and up to the vertex of the head of the child and the reading is recorded onto the display above. So short stature can be defined on the basis of three parameters. The first is height less than third percentile or less than two standard deviations. You must remember in percentiles it is less than three percentiles and in standard deviations it is less than two standard deviations of mean height for that age and gender. The second parameter is height velocity. We will discuss in further scenes. It should be less than 25th centile for age over a 6 to 12 months of observation period. And the third possibility is if the child is very short for mid parental height to target height, which we will see further. Now, the first parameter is the height or the length. The height less than third percentile or two standard deviations of mean height for that age and gender as already discussed. Now this is a growth chart for boys 5 to 18 years of age. Suppose a boy of 7 years of age, he has a height of around 108 centimeters here. This height is less than the third percentile. Here is the third percentile and this height is less than the third percentile. So this boy will be short stature. The second parameter is height velocity. To calculate height velocity, you must have at least two recordings of height at a decent interval of say minimum 15 days to one month. That is the child should present to you at least two times in the OPD. Normally, length of a newborn is 50 centimeters at birth. During the first year, the height velocity is approximately 2 centimeters increase per month. During the second year, it is approximately 1 centimeters per month. From 3 to 12 years onwards, it is approximately 0.5 centimeters per month. Girls between the age group of 12 to 16 years have a height velocity of approximately 8 centimeters per year and boys between the age group of 14 to 18 years have a height velocity of 10 centimeters per year. This is the height velocity chart for boys between 5 to 17 years of age. Suppose the height velocity curve of a child, it goes like this. Now this height velocity, you see, it is less than the 25th percentile. So this child should also be considered to be short stated. But remember, this velocity curve can be plotted over a period of at least 6 to 12 months. So the height velocity cutoff is less than 25th centile. Normal height velocity is seen in physiological types of short stitches like familiar and constitutional. But a slow height velocity or decreased height velocity is seen in conditions like growth hormone deficiency. The third parameter is the target height or the mid parental height which, is, which can be calculated by the formula which is for boys it is mother's plus father's height in centimeter upon 2 plus 6.5 centimeters and for girls it is minus 6.5 centimeters. Now for this the prerequisite is that you must know the height of the mother and the father. That is if the child presents to you with some uncle then you will not be able to calculate the mid parental height or the target height. Now this is implicated in short stature which is of the familial type because the familial short stature follows trend in the family. So if the members in the family are short stature, the boy is also likely to be short stature. So if the target height is 
if he has achieved target height then it is uh, presumably familial kind of rod station now here is this uh, height growth chart now you see if the mid parental height at approximately 18 years of age if the height of the child which was expected to be at the 25th centile is somewhere between the 3rd and the 10th centile then in that case also the child is short stated remember the target height of the mid parental height is the approximate height which the child would achieve after the growth of the child has uh, stopped that is around 17 to 18 years of age the next thing you must determine is whether the child has normal or deranged upper segment to lower segment ratio that is whether the short stature is proportionate or disproportionate obviously you will calculate the upper segment to lower segment ratio normally the uslf ratio at birth is 1.7 at 3 years it is 1.3 at 6 years it is 1.1 and at 10 years it is 1 some books mention that at one point that uh, at 7 years of age itself the height the uslf ratio has become 1 Increased USLS ratio is seen in rickets, achondroplasia, and untreated congenital hypothyroidism, and decreased USLS ratio is seen in spondylarthritis, dysplasia, and vertebral anomalies. You will here note a disproportionate kind of short stature. It is mostly due to anomalies in the bone and the cartilage. Also, a relationship between the arm span and the height can as well be asserted. the arm span is the distance between the tips of the middle fingers of the arm stretched outstretched sideways at birth arm span is less, less than the length of the baby by 2.5 cm and thereafter the arm span is almost equal to the height unless and until it is a genetic or a syndromic child the third important query is determination of bone age Bone age is determined by the presence appearance of epiphyseal centers and second by the fusion of epiphyses with metaphyses. Now say bone age is the rate at which skeletal maturation is occurring. Usually the left hand and wrist is used for bone age assessment as a standard since the majority of people are right handed and the right hand becomes more prone to injury that is why we for assessment of bone age we get an x-ray of the left wrist and hand. okay so if the bone age is chronological age is equal to chronological age chronological age i guess everyone knows it is the age of the child in year calculated from the day of the birth of the baby so if bone age is equal to chronological age it is like and the child is short stated it is likely to be familial if bone age is more than chronological age it is precocious puberty and if bone age is less than chronological age then it is almost all other causes of uh, short stature can be included in this category which include constitutional nutritional chronic illnesses and endocrine causes now the grulich pile atlas it is an atlas of images of different x rays of left hand and wrist you can compare your patient's x ray with the images in the atlas and determine the bone age The X-ray left hand is used since it is most rapid, impartial, and it involves minimal radiation exposure to children. The second method for estimation of the bone age is the Tanner-Whitehouse method. This assesses and scores each bone of the left hand before calculating an estimated age. Then, the fourth and the next important point is the role of pubertal assessment. We know that peak height velocity is seen in the adolescent age group. In girls, the height spurt is achieved in early puberty, whereas in boys, the height spurt is achieved usually in the mid puberty. In precocious puberty, there is a early height spurt followed by premature epiphyseal fusion, and which leads to short stature. Etiologically, the short stature can be classified as physiological or pathological. physiological short stature is of two types first is the constitutional and second is the familial 
Constitution means composition. In constitutional delay, the composition of the body is such that it grows very slowly and puberty is also delayed, but it achieves a normal final height. The minimum short stature on the other hand means it follows the trends of height in the family. That is, if the parents are short, child would also be short. So the final height may be low, but it would be as per the expected mid-parental height, which we had calculated earlier. Okay. The pathological causes of short stature are the following, which include chronic illnesses, Condition, chronic conditions like cerebral palsy, congenital heart disease, congenital, these chronic respiratory illnesses like cystic fibrosis and asthma, maladaptive states, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, then endocrinal causes like growth hormone deficiency, hypothyroidism, Cushing syndrome, pseudo hypoparathyroidism, precocious or delayed puberty, children who are born small for gestational age, skeletal dysplasias, and genetic syndromes. There are certain clinical pointers also to short stature. In history, you have the following clinical pointers. For example, if the child is low birth weight, the probable etiology will be might be short for gestation, small for gestational age. Polyuria points towards a renal illness, a chronic renal illness like chronic renal failure or renal tubular acidosis. Chronic diarrhea, etc. points towards malabsorptive states, so on and so forth. Then there are certain clinical pointers on examination also. For example, disproportion we had already discussed. Dysmorphism is indicative of congenital syndromes, etc. Now coming on to the investigations. Level 1 investigations are the most essential investigations and have to be done in every patient who qualifies to be meeting the criteria of short stature. This includes a CBC, ESR, LFT, RFT, urine RN, stool RN, a chest x-ray PPD and a bone age estimation. I have already told you the bone age is for the most easy, the easiest bone and the recommended bone to be screened or to be imaged for estimating the bone age is the left to wrist and hand. Now if these investigations are positive, then probable etiologies of chronic disease, chronic infection and skeletal dysplasia you are able to ascertain or maybe to rule out if required. If you reach to no conclusions with the level 1 investigation, you can move on to the level 2 investigation, which include hormonal estimation like thyroxine TSH. Some practitioners, they get a thyroxine TSH done at the first level itself because this is quite common. Hypothyroidism is fairly common and it is an easily treatable cause of short station. Then celiac serology, LHFSH and karyotyping in girls to rule out Turner syndrome. But obviously Turner syndrome most of the time has phenotypic clinical features also which will help us in uh, suspecting the diagnosis of Turner syndrome. The level 3 kind of investigations are a growth hormone assay, serum IGF, insulin like growth factor 1, insulin like growth factor binding protein 3 and MRI brain. If none of these investigations, however, turn out to be successful, then you may label the patient to be having idiopathic short stature. But prior to proceeding to investigations, you must have investigated the four criteria which we had discussed in the earlier scenes stepwise, in a stepwise manner after taking a proper history and doing a clinical examination. The family history is also very important. Coming on to management, physiological causes mainly require counseling, dietary advice, physical exercises, reassurance and annual monitoring. While pathological causes mainly require treatment of underlying conditions like limb limbing procedures for skeletal dysplasia, thyroxine supplementation for hypothyroidism, subcutaneous growth hormone recombinant growth hormone injections for growth hormone deficiency. For constitutional delay, one may consider short course of low-dose testosterone or estrogen for three to six months, specific therapy for chronic systemic disorders, low dose estrogens for Turner syndrome and delayed puberty and anabolic steroid. So if a child, summarizing the video, if a child has come to you with suspected short stature parents complaining that the child is not gaining height, then you must do the following. First thing is you measure height and length. While measuring height and length, you can also calculate the upper segment to lower segment ratio. 
I guess everyone knows what is the upper segment. It is from the vertex up to the cubic symphysis and the lower segment is from the cubic symphysis up to the foot. Along with this, if the patient has come to you for the second time, then you can calculate the height velocity also. If the parent's height is available, if the parents have also come to with the child or the height is available, then at the same time, you can also calculate the mid-parental height or the target height, which the child is likely to achieve when he has uh, when his growth has stopped and you may plot a probable curve on the growth chart. So if the patient fulfills the criteria of having short stature, then the short stature can either be disproportionate, most of the time it is bone and cartilage disorders or it can be a proportionate short, short stature, usually more the other causes. So disproportionate short stature means upper segment lower segment ratio altered and if the upper segment lower segment ratio is increased, then rickets, con achondroplasia, and congenital hypothyroidism are the common causes. But they are usually identified with other clinical features. Child with, matlab, before presenting as short stature, child would present with other symptoms and signs. Then decreased USL ratio is seen in spondylar epiphyseal dysplasia and vertebral anomalies. Obviously, the spine. When there are vertebral anomalies, the spine is not able to be as long as it is expected to be and the upper segment, length of the upper segment decreases. In any case, you must go for targeted investigations if it is a disproportionate kind of short stature and management of the underlying cause is the management of short stature. If it is a proportionate kind of short stature, then you must assess whether it is physiological which are the two most common types of physiological short stages are constitutional and familial. Constitutional in which the body composition itself is such that it is growing at a slow pace and familial in which the growth curve of the child follows the growth curve of the parents. And pathological which are more of the other causes. In either case, whether physiological or pathological, you have to go for level 1 investigations, which I had told you earlier. These include CBC, ESR, LFT, RFT, then chest X-ray, PPD, and stool RM, urine RM, and uh, this bone age estimation. Along with, if the child is having pathological short stature, you would also like to go for level 2 and 3 investigations. If the child has physiological short stature, you have ascertained with a good clinical history and examination, then good nutrition, reassurance and psychological counselling is mostly all that suffices. But if it is a pathological short stature, again, management of the underlying cause is the management of the short stature. Thank you so much for a patient listening and have a very good day. Thank you.